Hi friends, a very warm welcome to all of you. Today we are back with one more show of Chell Genius where we are going to interact with one more guest regarding the startup ecosystem. Want to know more about more from him? What kind of startups are getting investment nowadays? What's the scenario post COVID? And lot of other questions which we want him to answer. So today we have Mr. Rajesh Singhal. Rajesh Ji, welcome to our show. Thank you. And let me first introduce about him. He is having a very vast experience about startups. Though he looks relatively young in age, but his experience is very vast. He has been a startup evangelist. Uh, evangelist, I think, for nearly two decades. He has been in the investment division of the Times of India, and he has also been in the core committee of various business groups like Thai, among others. And he has a lot of other qualities, you know. And it will take around one hour if we discuss all about him, what he exactly does in the startup field. So I think the most important from him is let to let us get an insight of insight of him regarding the startups, what exactly is happening in the startup sector, and how he is helping the startups to grow. Rajesh ji, once again, we extend you a very warm welcome to our show, sir. And um, sir, first of all, I would like to ask you that. About the last year, it has been a very difficult year for all of us. Sir. There was a COVID. You are dealing with so many startups. Sir. I think really more than 15 to 20 companies. You have got a successful exit also after investment. You have got a successful exit. So whatever I, if I know about you more, what was your you know viewpoint regarding the startups? We found that you know during this period, many innovative startups also came came up. They did really very well. Many also closed shops. Now, the economy is reviving now. Okay, we find that economy is reviving now. What kind of startups do you think will invest, uh, will come up right now? And suppose if a fresh guy, if a fresh should wants to open his launch his startup, what is the first thoughts that he should keep in mind while doing that? See, uh, COVID-19 has been one of the biggest disruptor, at least in my career, which I've seen in the last 15-20 years. Almost every business or business model has been impacted by uh, COVID in some way, either positive way or a negative way. So the biggest challenge uh, uh, with the most of the start startups or entrepreneurs is basically the challenge of adapting to this change, adapting to the, this uh, change yes, in this model. And 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 so the bigger the challenge, the bigger is the opportunity. That's how I see. So those startups who are able to change and uh, are able to adapt to this uh, thing, uh, disruption, they will see a great success. So it's not that any particular sector is a flavor of the day and they should focus on this segment. They should now see how the business scenario is changing, whether and uh, how it can become a, a satellite scalable model and distributed economy and those kind of a business models are there. So it's not that there is a particular sector which has uh, more of an opportunity and other sectors are completely going down the drain. It's not like that. Business model is evolving in every sector and there is an opportunity in almost every sector. That's it. Sir, you are also in very close contact with investors also. Yeah. Okay, you are investors with investors. You are very close to the 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 investors. And investors are always looking for good opportunity and good entrepreneurs to invest on. Hmm. Practically speaking, if you see in India, every year how many startups, uh, uh, new startups are much? Yeah. About 10-12,000? Uh, and uh, how many HNIs are there in India now? Almost like about a million plus. So there are on one side there are a million plus uh, investors who are looking for good opportunities. And on the other side, there are about 10-12,000 to 12, new startups who are looking for funding. So investors are always looking for good opportunities. So the only thing which all these startups really need to do is to position themselves and create a confidence among the investing community that yes, if the money is invested on them, definitely uh, they had a chance to grow and that is what is the opportunity that investors are also looking at. And that confidence that yes, these are the entrepreneurs who will be able to uh, adapt to the changes, the changing environment and the, they are just waiting and watching like who are able to adapt quickly and that's why the, the small stock gap is there it's like a bit of uh, deceleration is there now once if they find that the things are uh, changing and uh, some of the entrepreneurs are like uh, 
uh, uh, adapting more quickly, then you will see that uh, surge come again again in the sort of investment scenario. If I am a startup, if I want to approach an investor, okay, what quality should I, I have and what are the things that I should keep in mind before approaching him? See, there are few, three, four qualities if I have a reasonable amount of intelligence, a high level of diligence and a high level of integrity and commitment. These are the three uh, quality aspects that any investor will look at. If you are missing in any one of these things, you will not be able to win the investor interest. Second thing, which second set of qualities which is like able to put themselves into the shoes of the stakeholders, be it the investors, be it the consumer, be it their uh, channel partners, and create think from their perspective and in their overall business model, create a win-win situation. If they are able to think from their perspective and address uh, their concerns within their revenue model, I think they will be able to attract those uh, stakeholders. And if they are able to attract their stakeholders, whether it is channel partner or customers or investor, they will see the silver lining of it. And second quality, which is like quick learning and uh, again uh, quickly changing and adapting to the changing environment. Is it always necessary to approach the investors with a good exit plan also? A revenue plan and a good exit plan that how what investor will exit after five years or six years is necessary always? See, any investor when he is entering into a, a, a room of, or a, a company, they will always look for an exit opportunity mm. also. So if there is no exit opportunity, then there is no point in an entering into that room. Mm. So that is definitely, so basically exit opportunity is what? It's like, okay, I have taken, I have taken the company from with my money, the company is going from X to Y level. Beyond that, I, I have a limitation. Company will require a different set of people, a different set of investment level. So somebody else will take to the next level. Mm. So that, if that confidence is there, so like uh, every set of investors or in every round, uh, the organization will go to the next orbit. So it's like, okay, I am a rocket, I'll be able to take this ship or spaceship only up to this orbit, then I have to separate it out and then somebody else, some other rocket will fire and will take it to the next higher orbit. That's how the system works. If you think that, okay, that there is no next orbit, next rocket will not fire, then there is no point in taking off a right at the beginning. It's better to call up the this thing. And sir, a uh, lot of startups we feel has we see has burned the cash of the investors. You know, a lot of things we come around. Kitna paisa dala par wo burnt ho gaya. Do you think that this kind of things really put a negative impact on on you know the new startups which are just getting launched? वो तो ना एक मशीनी सारे तालाब को गंदा कर दिए पर यहाँ तो बहुत सारी मशीनें हैं. जी. तो actually मैं overall sentiment has been uh, has become very skeptical in the investor community because of uh, many of these startups who don't focus on uh, selling the product or services but only are running from one investment round to the next investment round. They are only trying to sell their stake and their company and they are not trying to sell the product or uh, their services. So that is basically causing the problem. Right? So it is becoming like a, and investors, those who are coming in the, in the first round, for them, it is becoming a, like a, a kind of a, a statement kind of a situation. Okay, either we put more money, or it is there is a dead end for the company. So that kind of a scenario is uh, not a very welcome situation. Not very well. And equity, if we talk about, yeah. Um, kitna equity ek startup ko dena dena chahiye initially? Do you think any figures kitna equity se parte kar dena chahiye or is it anything like that? See this thing. Uh, I'm sure you also interact with a uh, mm. lot of uh, angel investors, mm. HNIs who are all investing into this asset class for the first time. So I think you also need to pass on this message to them. Sometimes what happens like uh, a startup does not understand the value of their equity. Mm. They think that what is an intangible thing. They do. Just teach me to barter. Let me do the barter and uh, get the things done with the, in view of the equity. So by the time the business model get established, uh, the founding team is left with a uh, is not left with the majority of the stake uh, state with them. So now, so sometimes what happens? Ah. Even the HNIs or angel investors, mm -hmm. they feel that they take the startup for the ride and they grab a large chunk of equity for a for a piddly amount. Achha. Maybe 30, 40 percent of equity for maybe 15, 20, 50 lakhs or something. Now, they don't understand, they become the entry barrier for the next round of institutional investment because no institutional investor will touch such company with a barge pole if the founding team does not have a majority stake. Because in that case, 
founder team will not have any motivation to carry on the business. Very true, very true. It will become like they will, they will always look on the outside like what new venture to start with Take and uh, where I can put my effort, uh, focus Take there. Take because here it is becoming the stake is becoming the, like a ESOP. Hmm. So after one or two rounds, so ideally speaking, to go up to the pre-series A kind of uh, the uh, level or a series A kind of a level, Investor should, uh, uh, the founding team still should have about 70-75% uh, of their stake. So you advise that they should have a 70-75% stake minimum? Uh, uh, till till pre-series A or series A. Hmm. So th they should manage this thing within say 25-30% to 30 of the, uh, the, the this thing, stake. They should be able to cover the first uh, one or two years or three years of their uh, the early stage, growth stage. Hmm. They should be able to cover by diluting that 20-30% uh, of stake. But sir, you don't think that the temptation to grow startups is to grow quickly, to bring money, to bring money, and 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 to bring money. See, they, they, this set of invest, uh, yeah. entrepreneurs, I am very skeptical of. Like yeah. those who do not want to grow their business, but just to grow it uh, with the objective of selling it to the investors. Yeah. Investors will go a little bit of business. They will go a little bit of business. अब उनका अगर ये इंटरेस्ट दिख रहा है कि I just grow it up to a certain level, create a bubble out of this thing of my Excel sheets and just instruct it off to some investor, that's the first thing. At least I am very rather cautious of while I'm investing.